This is William Wordsworth. He is a romantic poet. Um, you see his dates here from 1770 to 1850. He is um, writing uh, as a literary, uh, as a literary man, a poet, and like many romantic artists and thinkers, he shares a discontent with civilization and society and feels that his human nature is at odds with the modern industrial world. And so, like many romantics, his purpose in writing is to try to detach himself from the um, tainting and um, corrupting influences of industrial society and to allow his spirit to rejuvenate. And for Wordsworth, the way that you escape from the constraints and the habits of industrial civilization is you need to extract yourself physically from that environment and move into the countryside, into the natural world. And it is here in the natural world, says Wordsworth, where we find ourselves able to um, rejuvenate ourselves and uh, get in touch with our true sense of self and the true spirit of human nature. And so the little excerpt that I gave you is um, a preface to a set of poems um, that he published uh, called The Lyrical Ballads. And he, he knew um, that these lyrical ballads would disturb some people because the language was not figurative and um, high like poets usually spoke in artificial diction with a lot of metaphor and fancy symbols and he was striving for a plainer more simple language and so Wordsworth's rebellion against industrial civilization comes in the form of language and poetry and he feels that he has to explain himself uh, and what he's doing. And so in his opening sentence here, these poems refers to the lyrical ballads. And he says that he wants to focus on incidents and situations from common life. That is to say, um, don't forget that both Wordsworth and most of the Romantics are um, highly educated individuals. And they are reaching into the natural world of the countryside, farmers and laborers who have no um, particular level of high education. And so common life for Wordsworth is the rural countryside. And what he wants to do <coughs> is to <coughs> not only describe them, but as he says here, to write his poetry in the language really used by men. And um, so he wants his poetry to sound the way that farmers and country workers talk. Now, if you know anything about the way that farmers and country workers talk, you know that it is not anything poetic. And here is the core of the contradiction in Wordsworth's um, uh, notion of romanticism. So he wants to have it both ways. He wants to idealize the language of ordinary rustic country life. And at the same time, he um, feels that there's a problem with that because he says, even though he wants to write in the language really used by men, he feels it necessary to throw over these words with a certain coloring of imagination because it's a little too vulgar. So he wants to use the rural, natural countryside and the language of ordinary men as his inspiration, but he can't quite bring himself to speak the way that country folk speak. And so um, he wants to improve on that. And he says here that humble and rustic life was generally chosen. So again, he's talking about what we would call the pastoral or country life, because he says in that condition, people who live in the country 
their essential passions of the heart, that is to say their human emotions and feelings, reach a certain level of maturity um, uh, that you can't get in civilization. And I want you to understand that this resonates with Columbus discovering uh, cultures in the Caribbean who lived a simpler life and Columbus makes these observations that, you know, somehow this simpler life unclutters them and removes them from the cynicism and the burden of industrial society and in a way makes them purer of heart. And so Wordsworth wants to speak in what he calls a plainer and more emphatic language because our core feelings, he says, um, really should be embedded in a language that is simple that you can have complex language to get at the core of the basics of human emotion. But I want you to look at how long his first sentence is, and I want you to understand that while he is talking the talk about how he wants um, uh, his poetry to be simple and plain, his actual language is very, very sophisticated and is not really doing what he says he wants it to do. He also says that his poems are going to take the language of these ordinary farmers and country workers and purify it. That is to say, remove what he calls its real defects, which is anything that causes dislike or disgust. So that could be anything from vulgarity to talking about the things that you would talk about in farm life. And so, as I say, he wants to have it both ways. Um, but his intention is to convey their feelings and notions in simple and unelaborated expressions. So he thinks that this um, intention is at odds with normal figurative language and poetry. And um, this is just him in this paragraph disassociating himself from um, his contemporaries who are trying to write um, literally the way that country people speak. And he, he doesn't want to go that low, um, although he wants to retain their inspiration. Um, so he comes here now to another key point of romanticism and the art of expression in language. His definition of good poetry is what he calls the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. That means to say that Wordsworth is all about experience first and thinking about it after. So he wants to go into nature and shut off his brain, shut off the rational intellectual part of himself, and just experience the feeling of what it's like to live and be in the country life that farmers and rural workers use and live by, and to approximate as close as he can what I suspect he thinks was human life in Eden before um, industrialism came along. And so um, it has to be um, spontaneous and emotional, but also the second part of it is after you experience that emotion, then you need to go back and process it rationally. So he wants to divide thought and feeling, and he wants to permit himself to experience emotion completely and uninhibited. And this desire to, expression, to express emotion um, that is unrestrained is really the core of what a lot of romantic um, thinkers want to do. They don't want to be interfered with by their conscience or by their sense of what is right or wrong or by their sense of what is appropriate. They really want to just unleash it and let it rip and then think about it after. Parallel to this is a number of um, romantic poets who want to um, use drugs to do the same thing, so to become completely stoned on opium and experience that first, and then to think about it intellectually after. But the point is, do not let your mind and your rationality interfere with your ability to experience things 
emotionally. And so that is really um, the issue of what he's trying to do here. So to recapitulate, um, Wordsworth wants a world where he, he wants the purity and simplicity of rural life, but he's repulsed by it at the same time. So he uses it as an inspiration that he has to improve on. And so he takes basic, simple, rustic life, he needs to polish it up and to return to the natural world, and he wants to experience that in a completely unrestricted and emotional way, and then to reconstruct it intellectually. And that is the germ of what Wordsworth wants to do.